Hi, thanks for joining me in another video. Electric pickup truck options are growing and Chevy wants to take its piece of the market with the Chevrolet Silverado EV. We have the work truck option with us today and it has the power of the Ultium EV platform. Let's see how the Silverado EV does. I noticed Silverado EVs were available for rental at major airports, so I thought I'd check one out. Chevy so far only has two options, the WT or work truck and the RST, which is what you as a consumer can purchase right now. The work truck has a 3 or 4 WT option. This one is a fleet vehicle for the rental company, so we've got the 3 WT model. Keep in mind as a work truck we aren't going to get the fanciest options in here, but we do get to try out the Ultium platform. Most of the EV manufacturers that have been producing trucks have been making more luxury trucks, so I'm happy to see Chevy is making a stripped down version for fleets. As for pricing, the WT versions start at around $75,000, but for the first edition RST, you're looking at a whopping $96,500. Focusing on our truck, the 3WT is estimated to get a range of 393 miles, 600 foot pounds of torque, and has 1,750 pounds of max available payload. Even more impressive is that Chevy states this truck has DC fast charging capabilities of up to 350 kilowatts. So we'll definitely be testing that out. There's so much to look at in and around the truck, so let's start off with its design. The front is distinct with its matte black panel, futuristic headlight design, and on the top, a sloped roof. From its side profile, it looks like a truck, which is more than you can say about one of its competitors. Conveniently, there's a step on the side to make ingress easier. Equipped on the WT model are 18 inch wheels, but on the RST you can get huge 24 inch wheels. GM put the charging port in the back on the driver's side, so this door doesn't look out of place in comparison to their gas variants of the Silverado. The exterior dimensions of the truck are very similar to the F-150 Lightning, give or take an inch from the width and length, so it still doesn't fit in the garage. We have a very large trunk. Like the F-150 Lightning, the trunk allows for flat loading, which is fantastic. These slots here are for some accessories that you can get, like dividers, and Chevy even has a slide-out toolbox planned. You've got a 120-volt outlet here for powering or charging up tools, and it's well lit at night, too. We've used this cooler in the Rivian and the Lightning in the past. Let's see if it fits here. Cool, and it fits. And be careful with your fingers under here, because once you slam it down, it'll automatically start closing. And I don't think it'll detect your fingers there, so be careful. Two things I'd like to mention, even though we don't have it on this truck, are the multi-flex tailgate and midgate. The tailgate on this work truck is basic, but on the RST, it's neat. It's using the same multi-flex tailgate that's offered in the other Silverado models. You can pop a panel up to act as a bed extender, or you can pop it down and use it as a step up into the bed. The second is what the Silverado EV is most famous for, which is its mid-gate with pass-through. This back wall would come down to accommodate longer items. Unfortunately, this feature isn't available in the work truck. Anyway, there are more outlets back here featuring four 120-volt 20-amp outlets and even a 240-volt twist lock outlet. This truck is ready for a work site. Let's continue inside. Since this trim is focused for work, we are not looking at anything lavish like what's inside the RST. In fact, it's so basic I had to make my own modification to the truck. This seat only has two adjustments, how far forward it goes and the back reclining. But what about the height, Chevy? Short people can't drive this truck because the seat is so low and you can't adjust it. I have a lot of difficulty seeing above the steering wheel with my modifications, but without it, it's impossible. Moving on from my seat troubles, we still have a nice simple interior and it's so spacious in here. There's an 11.3 inch touchscreen and an eight inch driver display. This interface is running Android, but you can also hook up your phone for wireless Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Some of the features of the truck do require a data subscription for use. For the most part, it's all hard plastics, but that's okay because it might be easier to wipe down when it gets dirty at work sites. There's also a good amount of storage around the cabin. There's a huge amount of legroom in the back for your passengers and these seats fold for extra storage back here. I've charged this up to 100% and our odometer is at 4,558 miles. I'll let you know what I end up with shortly. This will be a drive with no towing or cargo and the bed won't be covered. All right, so let's start driving. This is a hands-free start just like a Tesla or a Rivian. So to start it, you just need to get in the car and have your key around you and then press on the brake pedal. This is how all EVs should start. 
However, I've noticed an odd behavior. If you drive and put the truck in park, then hit the brake, it seems to think you want to go for another drive and it won't shut down even after you get out and lock the car. The workaround I found is to drive forward a foot and then put the truck back in park. Then it'll shut down when you get out. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but hopefully Chevy can update the truck to fix this. Driving on pillows is not the safest, but not seeing the road is probably worse. I just got to get through 300 more miles of driving. First thing to note, there is true one pedal driving in this truck, and you can also adjust it to max level region. Or if you're not about that, you can always just adjust the settings. I know this is full size pickup, so I expect that extra weight, but boy does this truck feel heavy. I'm trying to remember if the Lightning did, but for sure the Rivian didn't. I wouldn't say this is the quietest interior. I'm driving on the freeway and there is some wind noise coming through, so it does all right. There's traffic aware cruise control in this truck and there's also a safety feature to nudge you back into the lane if you go over the line. I thought I would have some challenges parking this vehicle, but surprisingly, it wasn't bad. With the clear backup camera alerts and good turning radius, I was able to park with more confidence. Okay, time to get into some of the technical stuff. This is the first time we're testing out an Altium platform. I see advertising every time I go to EVgo, so it better be pretty impressive. I miss the smaller Altium Ready stickers they used to have on the stalls. Realistically, every charger is Altium Ready. There's nothing special about them. I have one of these on an outlet at home for charging this truck. For real though, this platform is pretty interesting. The battery pack is able to change its voltage on the fly. For driving an everyday task, it's considered a 400 volt platform. But when plugging into a DC fast charger, it changes its configuration so that it's a 400 volt or 800 volt platform. It's an interesting concept and I bet will help them with the upcoming transition to NAX. Another cool thing is that it has a wireless BMS. In most cars, the battery management system has wires running all over the pack to monitor its status. This leads to a lot of weight in the cables alone. Removing these makes the battery pack lighter, reducing cost and increasing efficiency. It's also modular, so GM can add or remove batteries to fit a particular vehicle. So something like this Silverado would have a lot more modules than the rumored Altium Bolt. GM also seems to be pretty committed to vehicle-to-home capabilities. All cars they've released so far using the Altium platform are compatible with their V2H enablement kit. The motors on this truck are pretty powerful too, getting 510 horsepower in tow haul mode and 600 foot-pounds of torque. It's able to tow up to 12,500 pounds and haul 1,750 pounds of weight in the bed. The motors on this truck are capable of 189 kilowatts of power output each. With the RST trim, it's capable of even more, getting 754 horsepower in its wide open watts mode. I like that name. And getting 785 foot-pounds of torque. I've brought the battery down to 10% and our odometer is at 4,902 miles. That means we drove 344 miles. So by my calculations, if we drove this all the way down to zero, we'd get 382 miles on a full charge. So we're 11 miles short of our 393 miles estimated range. Let's go to the DC fast chargers next door and plug into the 350 kilowatt EVgo charger. So we started our charge at EVgo and ended up with a maximum of 110 kilowatts, even though our state of charge was really low. The car seemed to be locked at 193 amps for some reason, and the charger didn't indicate any reason the amperage would be limited. Unfortunately, all the other chargers at this site were only capable of 100 kilowatts, so I decided we had to go to another site. Plugging back in at another EVgo and... what? Only 175 kilowatts? EVgo has a partnership with GM, this should work perfectly. Again, all other chargers at this site were only capable of 100 kilowatts, so we had to move again. Electrify America, please work. I was pretty frustrated at this point, so I didn't bother recording myself plugging in. Ugh, again, maxing out just over 100 kilowatts. Let me try another charger. Maybe we're sharing power with someone. Finally, a good charger. We're getting over 300 kilowatts. I'm betting if we had plugged in here at 10%, we would have hit the 350 kilowatt mark. Things ran pretty steady for a while and the charge started to slow down at a normal rate. It got to 50% and I decided it was time to sit in the truck to wait because it's so hot out. Immediately as the truck powered on, our charging rate tanked and we were only getting about 20 kilowatts. What is going on? Plugged back in and things went smoothly until 80%. This graph isn't going to be a reliable source of information. I'm not sure if all of our charging issues today were because of a faulty charger or because something was wrong with this truck. 
In total, our cost was $63.44 to charge up and it took 37 minutes to go from 17 to 80%. There are a ton of articles and videos where it performs really well, but we just had some extremely bad luck today. What are the positives and negatives about the Silverado EV? Its range options are great. You'll need that if you're towing or carrying a heavy load. It's very spacious inside and I'm impressed that they built an actual work truck. Not everything needs bells and whistles. Bonus for the large trunk and having one pedal driving capabilities. Safety features being standard is always a plus. Since we didn't have a successful charging test, I can't say much on its charging speed. However, I do want to add the odd charging behavior while sitting in the trunk. I don't know if it's a bug or just a coincidence. Having such a massive battery has pros and cons. It helps with range, but it will cost you more to charge up and it makes the vehicle heavier and less efficient. The work truck is more expensive compared to its gas siblings and the only offering right now for retail customers is the RST, which is quite costly. Chevy, if you're listening, seat height adjustments are important. What did you think of the Silverado EV3WT? Would you buy this for your fleet? It's nice Chevy made a work specific truck and it's very capable. Maybe one day we can review the RST and see how it does. I'm bummed I didn't really get the full Ultium experience in this vehicle. Thanks for spending time with me today. Have any VIA can review? Email me at info at Support our channel and check out our sticker shop. Kai's my dog. And follow us on social media at Kai ZV. That's all for now and happy charging.